Hey guys, it's Rue. I love you. Good welcome, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to what I read in September. So, in September, I've had the chance to reread <laughs> three of my favorite books. I love that for me. So, first of all, I started Malibu Rising by uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I got to page 74. I DNF'd it, slash put it on the side for later. I'm not really interested in that right now. It's just so slow for me. But it looks like a lot of family drama, so. You're a good boy. No, you're not a good boy if you sniff that. Don't do that. Next up, like I said, I got to reread my fa my favorites. This is my favorite book. It's Love Hypothesis by Miss Allie Azelwood. It is so amazing. I love it. Um, you can see all the tabs because every time I read it, I tab some more. So this book is about Adam and Olive. Olive is a third year PhD student just trying to go to get through it. And her best friend and her ex are kind of liking each other. So to prove them that she's over her ex, she doesn't care, they can date, she tells her best friend she's going on a date. Well, the night of said date, her friend sees her in the lab. So what does Olive does? Well, you know, she just goes and kisses the first person that's there, who happens to be Dr. Adam Carlson. Total hot shot, okay? He is, but he's also a well-known ass. He is a professor in the university and no one truly likes him. And well, that kiss starts a whole fake dating story and I just really liked it, honestly. Fake dating is one of my favorite tropes and that's my favorite book. And I do love everything Ali Azelwood puts out. I know people are like, oh, Love on the Brain and Love Theoretically are just like reboots of this book. Honestly, yes and. You can give it to me. I will love it either way. Like, <laughs> this is my favorite. Honestly. Next up, I read this book right here. So this book is called The, the Duke's Quenry by Quenry Quentry. I'm... I don't know how to pronounce that name. It's by Candy Hutton, and it's the second book in this type of series. So, this book is about Drake, who is a duke, and looking for the, like, perfect duchess, perfect woman to marry. But, at the same time, Mrs. Penelope is staying at his family's estate to go to her first, like, ball season. Well, you know, he's still looking for the perfect bride, trying to find her a groom. And of course, they start falling for each other. Um, it is very sweet. I really liked the first book, which was about Jason, who is Drake's best friend. And I know that the next two in this series are about two of his sisters. So there's only four books of this series that has been translated and put into like this edition, if I can say. Um, in French and I own those four will I read the next ones because there's like eight in the series I think I do not know but I own the first four and this will definitely be read in winter because royalty slash fantasy ish that's my winter go-to so I will definitely read book three and four then next now dark romances <laughs> are a thing um a lot of time I keep them for like end of summer slash start of fall, which is exactly the mood I was going for. And I read this. So this is the Pale Court Duet by Liv Zender. First one is King of Flesh and Bone. Second is Queen of Rotten Pain. Um, I will say it right now, there is a pregnancy plot in this. And it is very present because they both want kids. But it was not too present for it to like be on my nerves. So this duet is about Enosh who is a god 
long forgotten for false gods. He is one of three gods with his two brothers. He is the one who brings rot to every dead bodies. So Enosh hasn't done his job in about two centuries. Um, we learn why later in the book. Then our other character is Ada. She is a midwife and she's just trying to, you know, live her life. Well, Ada is one night dragged to Enosh's kingdom by her dead donkey who was just, you know, crossing over. And there starts a lot of smut, honestly. <laughs> if you can see all the little tabs at the top here, that's all like smut at the top. Um, just want to let you know. So Enosh becomes enamored with Ada. He becomes obsessed with her and with having lack of a better term, a warm body with him since, you know, death. And he kind of makes her prisoner, kind of twists her legs a couple of times so she can't run away. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> he just... They end up falling for each other. It's a whole thing. Honestly, I don't know how to describe this better. Um, there's definitely a list of trigger warnings somewhere. So yeah, you follow them through like <laughs> thick and thin, honestly, like being enamored, but also there's a lot of shit that happens in like 500 pages. I liked it though, it was good. Next up, I was reading two books at the same time. I will start by the one I have a physical copy of, which is King of Wrath by Anna Wong. It's the first book in the King of Sins series. I really want to read the others because book two, King of Pride, I think it is, is about Kai and I love them in this. So I was <laughs> buddy reading this with my best friend. She's still currently reading it. This is a billionaire CEO arranged marriage romance. What more do you want? Honestly, so fucking good. So this is about Dante, who is just this well-known CEO, arrogant bastard. Honestly, I'm just gonna put that the way. Just made of stone for no one, for everyone except her kind of type. Then we have Vivian, who's the heiress to a jewelry company. Well, one day out of nowhere, she is engaged to Dante and to be wed in a year's time and you know they aren't supposed to fall in love but of course they do the other book i read at the same time than this baby was i'm glad my mom died by janet mccurdy Whew, this book was a wild ride um but i was there for it and this it's an autobiography by janet mccurdy and we go through her life from being a child actress to Nickelodeon to eating disorders, sexual abuse, physical slash emotional abuse from her mother and um, alcoholism and just getting through that, getting better for herself. And uh, yeah, so a lot of it... Well, a lot of it. The whole thing about eating disorder really resonated with me and also <sighs> kind of healed me, honestly, in a way, because I am recovering from anorexia. Um, like I've been in recovery for like three years, I'd like to say, but sometimes it's still hard and just reading the, reading this, you're not alone. And yeah, it was really healing to me. After that, I started and DNF'd Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. I also have that one um, on ebook. I did not really even understand what I was reading and I read 55% of it. 
So we follow Alice and Felix and Eileen, I wanna say, I don't really remember her name, and Simon, and it's just relationships that are friendship, sexual relationship, romance, and just like how relationships work. Um, there's no plot, only characters in that book. And every other care every other chapter is about the um it's emails between the two girls. And the emails for me at some point I was just skipping them because they were what we already said, plus more emotions, plus trying to go more in depth, even though we have some depth while it's happening. Plus some of their past, which I didn't give a shit about plus history for some reason so i end up giving it one star and the end of the day 55 percent in next i read it five star uh <laughs> this bitch so this is reckless heart by brighton walsh i bought this book because of an instagram thing and then i kept seeing it on like my Instagram reels and my TikTok for your page, so I got it. Like the first scene, well, kind of the first scene was like always on my for you page. So I was like, but why not? This is a uh, book four of the series. This is also the discreet cover. Uh, I didn't care if it was discreet or not. It's just very pretty. This book is about Aiden Avery, who think it's only gonna be a one night stand. Honestly. At the start of this book, they hook up. It's the best sex of both of their lives. The most tension and the most like chemistry they've ever had with anyone. But Avery is not supposed to stay there for a while. She's supposed to leave to go up to her mom's house the next morning. Well, there is some delays in her going to her mom's place and she ends up staying and needing a job. So her best friend Addison gives her this job at the family resort. Well, as I said, it's a family resort. Um, let's just say this is best friend's brother story. New boss. It's just honestly fucking amazing. I loved it. I really want to at some point buy the other books in the series because I'm pretty sure the other books are about his siblings. So he has four brothers and one sister. And I'm pretty sure book five is about his sister. Book six is about the youngest brother. And because three of his siblings already are dating people. So I'm pretty sure like those are the earlier books. But you don't need to read the others to read this one. Like it stands on its own. Yeah. Next. Do you want two more five stars? I got two more five stars for you. At the start of this video, I said that I got to reread three of my favorite books. Well, my favorite book is The Love Hypothesis. My favorite series is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So I fully read The Cruel Prince and I read most of The Wicked King in September. I just finished it, finished The Wicked King um, and we're the first of October. So this series is about Jude, who is a mortal girl in the fairy world. So Jude has lived in fairy her whole life, and her one and only dream is to become a knight for the court. Then on the other hand, we have Cardin. Cardin is the is a prince of fairy and thinks he can do whatever the fuck he wants. <coughs> and he's kind of a dumbass. Um, it is an enemies to lovers, but it is a fantasy political book with a romance subplot with spying, murders, royalty. It's just, it has it all. And I love it so much. And also like these books, I'm sorry, these books, fucking beautiful. And then we have book two, as I said, it's a series. So I'm not going to tell you much about it. But in this series, I think that every book is getting better and better. Book one was already a five star. Book two was even better. Book three, Queen of Nothing, is even better. So. So excited to read book three. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.